I have, I have new instances. You don't want to do it. I'll do one. That's fine. I can do one. Okay. Um, all right. Well, Mike, why don't you do one and then Darby two? Yeah, that's great.
Good morning. A special welcome to all of you who are visiting St. Teresa's. Today we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join us singing our opening song, All Are Welcome, All Belong. Number 924 in your Gather Hymnal. Number 924 in your Gray Gather Hymnal. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome to all on this eve of Halloween. It's a beautiful weekend, a beautiful moment to celebrate and to be filled with joy as we look at leaves changing, pumpkins, pumpkins being carved, costumes, masks. We approach the feast of mystery the feast that leads us from darkness into a marvelous light. So Halloween is both playful, it's filled with whimsy and mirth, it's also quite deep and mysterious and beautiful, and it is, a t it is truly a part of the liturgy of the church, which is why it's so important that we gather here on this eve of Halloween. So let's open our hearts as we prepare to bring in one more little child, a boy. Um, what better way to be playful on this Halloween Eve Eve to, than to welcome a baby into the church. And mom and dad, you have come into the church so that we could 
rejoice with you on this Halloween Eve as you are about to baptize your son. And so as he is baptized, our church will be enriched by his very presence on this eve of Halloween. So I invite the mom and dad and the godparents to come forward. You've asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility to teach him about Jesus, the church, the sacraments, and love, the love of the gospel. Do you both clearly understand that what you're about to take, undertake is extremely beautiful, awesome, and it's serious, but we are here to help you do the best you can. Are you willing to do that? Godparents, you are the witnesses of the assembly. Are you willing to help these parents raise this little child in the ways of the gospel? Yeah. And so, in its name, I claim William by the sign of the cross. I ask your parents and godparents to bless him with the sign of the cross. We call upon the beautiful Holy Spirit to banish all spirits that are not holy. And we, so we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May you strengthen this power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing the praises of our God. Let us pray.
almighty loving God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and beautiful, beautiful service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down from the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins, that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it? Or be preserved had you not called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls. For your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them, and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or letter allegedly from us to the effect that the Lord, day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was but he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, Come down from the tree quickly, for today I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus came down the tree quickly and received him with joy. When the people saw all this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. If I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, a welcome to all on this festive, beautiful festive weekend of the eve of Halloween, All Hallows Eve. It's a day, one of my favorites, like Christmas Eve, it's a day, Halloween, to embrace mystery and to tell stories. So every Halloween, I try and find a story that speaks to our children, particularly the child in all of us in this church. 
So if you are in touch with the child in your heart, I hope you hear the story. It's a story that connects us with trees. Trees are very important. Wonderful things happen at and in trees. Sometimes not so good things happen in trees. So for those of you who are childlike in your heart, I have no doubt you'll get something from this. For those who are not, for the next 12 minutes, simply fall asleep. <laughs> This feast of mystery, we must face fear. We must face the darkness. We fear getting older. We fear failure. We fear death. This is now a time to be filled with story and whimsical imagination as we face the fears of the unknown. We become saturated in skeleton bone, we become tipsy in witch's brew as the stories unfold and as this story of the tree of Halloween unfolds for you to embrace and to love. A tree, nine children, Halloween. They gather every Halloween, nine. I'm not sure why nine is important, but nine children. Eight of them gathered and they found each other in costumes decorated to the brim. But one child was missing. The ninth child was missing. They went to his house. His name is Pipkin. Any child named Pipkin is dear to my heart. <laughs> Pipkin was inside his house. They were yelling at him, we're ready to go trick-or-treating. He came out and stood on the porch gingerly with some sadness. He didn't look good. He said, you go ahead and go to that big, huge house four blocks from here. We all know it's haunted. Every village has a haunted house. He said, I'll catch up with you. They left. The eight left. The eight. And they went to that house, the haunted house. They looked up at its multiple gables. Why is it haunted houses have many gables? And he looked up, they looked up, and one had the audacity to knock on the knocker that looked like the knocker on the door on the eve of Christmas with Scrooge. And they saw a face on the knocker. The door opened slowly and out came the owner. 11 feet high, 11 feet tall. Of course, he wasn't quite that tall. But when you're nine, you're eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old, he looked at them, his name was Moonshroud. Once again, anyone named Moonshroud is a great character. He looked at them and he said, why are you here? They looked at him as Halloween. He goes, you really want to know about Halloween? Follow me. Follow me. They followed him outside behind the haunted mansion. The huge man named Monsterhout. And he brought them to a tree. Remember, remember, don't forget, wonderful things happen at trees, and also not so wonderful things. The trees were filled with small little pumpkins, and the pumpkins were carved with hundreds and hundreds of faces, for there were hundreds of pumpkins, and they were glowing in the dark, and the children, the eight children, one was missing, looked up at the tree, and Moonshroud said, where is the ninth? He ain't here. I think we got to go find him. So Moontrout said to the eight, are you ready? Do you want to go on a journey to find Pipkin? They all nodded yes. They entered the mystery of the tree, the Halloween tree. 
with the pumpkins ablaze. And through this magnificent 11-foot figure called Moonshrow, they entered into the history, their history, our history, thousands of years. They were brought to Egypt, to Rome, to Greece, to Ireland, to America. They were brought all over and they learned that at this time of the year, people did all sorts of wonderful things, mysterious, mysterious things at cemeteries, at houses. And they learned about feasts and mummies and Egypt and the Day of the Dead in Mexico and what we did, horrible things to people we called witches in our own country. And they learned the history. And Moonstroud said, but we're still missing the one, your friend. Do you want to see him? Yeah. You got to do one thing, though. You have to give up one thing. And then you'll find Pipkin. Are you willing to do it? They said, yes. Listen, children. Listen, all you childlike children. Trick-or-treating, you get. Before the trick or the treat, you've got to give. And he said, this is what you're bargaining with. You have to promise to give the last year of your life for love. You'll never know when that last year is. If you live to be 99, the 98th year. If you live to be 50, the 49th year, you have to give up one year of your whole life. Are you willing to do that to get a hold of Pipkin? Yeah. So he brought them into the deep roots of the Halloween tree. In mystery and in darkness, they went into the land of mummies and they heard a whispering, whimpering sound and a little mummy was wrapped up and they recognized the whisper of Pipkin. And they looked and Moonshroud said, talk to him. And they said, please, Moon, Moonshroud told us to come here. We're in this tree. Come to us, come to us. And the wind blew. All of his wrappings that covered him and surrounded him like a mummy, like a Halloween mummy, they all unraveled and he was free. And he ran and ran. And the eight followed, because now all nine were there, and they ran. And then Pipkin was gone. He disappeared. So the eight went to the house, knocked on the door. And the parents came, and they said, where is Pipkin? We saw him. They looked at him, and they said, right when you came, at the door, he was feeling very bad. Pipkin almost died. His appendix burst right as you were coming by the door. And as you were going to Halloween, and when you went to that house, where was that house he told you to go to? As you went to that house, we rushed him to the hospital. He was almost lost. And in the mystery of the Halloween tree, and in their giving of one year of their own love and life, Pipkin came to life. And Pipkin was going to be just fine. The bell tolled midnight. It was now All Saints Day. All the pumpkins, their lights extinguished. They fell away and the whiffs coming out of these little pumpkins whiffed and wafted in the air and they whiffed and wafted over all of the history of Halloween. Yes, indeed, marvelous things happen at trees. The Halloween tree, the tree of mystery, the tree of Eden where it all started, the tree of Eden. Something happened at that tree and the one tree we're looking at in this church Every week, we gather around a tree. It's an ancient symbol that's been with our church since day one. Every week, we gather around a tree. What is the tree that we gather around? The cross. The ancient authors always took that cross, planted in the seed of Calvary, and said, that cross mirrors that tree of the cross mirrors the tree of Eden. That cross undoes the darkness and the evil and death and makes everything into life and love. 
A little guy shorter than I am. I'm five feet five. Zacchaeus was even shorter than I am. What saved him? A tree. He climbed up a tree. And when he looked down the tree of the sycamore, he saw Jesus in a new way. He saw himself in a new way. He looked up or looked down, Jesus looked up, and he went into his house with Jesus. And that tree allowed Zacchaeus to see his whole life, not as an extortionist, as a tax collector, as an evil man, and he was, by the way, a horrible sinner. He was able to see himself through the tree in a way that created and recreated his dignity. He was a child of God, a son of Abraham. He was a part of the people of God, a part of the church. Wonderful things happen in trees. And that tree is planted at the meal. Remember, it all happened in Zacchaeus' house around a meal. That meal paralleled the Eucharist. And on this Halloween Eve, we gather to plant ourselves in the tree of Calvary, in the tree of Eden, in the Halloween tree, so that mystery can envelop us, so that we can be enveloped by the mystery, not of darkness, but of love. For love always wins out. Love always conquers everything, even burst appendixes. Love wins. That's Halloween. That's why it's so beautiful and important. Isn't that something that's joyous? Yes. By the way, you're clapping to a great man. Ray Bradbury inspired my homily. He's the one that's preached this homily. And the story comes from him. I encourage every adult here, if you haven't read it, it's a beautiful, beautiful read. It's short. It's a story called The Halloween Tree. Uh, I would encourage you to Google it and to read it. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. And now we're about to plant a boy in the tree of life, the tree of the cross. That's what baptism does. Baptism is a sacrament that makes us one with that tree, one with that cross. And so I ask the parents, the godparents, to stand. And lead us to the waters of rebirth. And those of you who fell asleep in the homily, wake up. <laughs> well, that's all right. Through the sacrament of water, God bestows life on all those who believe. Let us therefore be strong in faith and in memory, praying to God with one heart that this child be reborn in water and baptism, and in the Holy Spirit in baptism, that he be one and grafted on the tree of life and love, the tree of the cross, which always leads to resurrection. Most merciful Father, from the font of baptism, you have made the new life of your children well up within us. You have been pleased to unite by water and the Holy Spirit all the baptized into one people in your Son, Jesus Christ. You free us by the Spirit of love, whom you pour into our hearts. You choose all those who are baptized that they may joyfully proclaim to the nations the gospel of your Christ. Be pleased now to bless this beautiful warm water by which your servant, William, is about to be baptized. For you have called him to this cleansing water of rebirth in the faith of the church so that he may be alive and vibrant on the tree of life, the tree of the cross. The assembly, I ask you, parents and godparents, the sacrament of baptism, this child has been presented to us all. On your part, you must strive to bring him up in the ways of the faith so that the divine life may be preserved, his divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow stronger day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, mindful of your baptism, I ask everyone in this church to renew the vows of your baptism, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which this beautiful little boy is about to be baptized. So I ask all of you, the baptized, do you renounce Satan? 
and all of his works and all his empty show. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Is it your will that we'll be bap William be baptized in the faith of the church which we have just professed with you? All the way over. I promise you it's one dead. Put your hand up. Yeah, there you go. William, I baptize you. Look at that here. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You said he has to go to the bathroom? Well, maybe that'll help him. There you go. Let us process back to the altar. And if you light that candle, I'm that candle. Yes, you did it. We anoint you with Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from original sin. He's given you a new birth by one of the Holy Spirit. He's welcomed you into his holy people, the church. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that you may remain a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king, unto eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. My child, William, you have become a brand new creation. You have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be a sign to you of your Christian dignity with your family and friends who help you by word and example. Bring it unstained in eternal life. The most important candle of the church is this, the candle over there, and this symbolizes the Paschal candle, a symbol of light in the midst of darkness, in the midst on this day of Halloween darkness. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents of the assembly, this light is entrusted to all of us to be kept burning brightly so that your child, William, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light. And pers persevering in faith, may he run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Ephatha, be open. William, be open. Ephatha, may your ears be open to hear the word and your, may your mouth be open one day to proclaim the good news of Christ. Lift him a little bit higher as Zacchaeus, as Zacchaeus was lifted. There you go. We have a brand new person. There you go. And you can blow that. Please stand. After the presentation of the gifts will be the procession with the pumpkins. And please, as the music is played, bring your pumpkin up beneath the altar uh, that that may add to the festivities and the beauty of this beautiful feast of the eve of Halloween. And so let us open our hearts and pray. Because Jesus delights in seeking us and saving us, let us confidently present our needs to the Lord and God in his name. For our Holy Father, our Bishop, our Pastor, and the staff of this parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community of faith, and for those preparing to become members, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, the hungry, and the homeless, and for those who are ill or injured, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families and individuals uprooted from their home and in search of asylum, 
that they would find refuge, that we would open our hearts to welcome and support them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, Connor Heckler, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all the victims of violence in the city of Chicago. Devante Stedman, Carly Draper, Shakita Kerr, Kareem Nelson, and Troy Marshall. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, for those for whom we have promised to pray, and for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. And loving God, God of all that is good on this weekend of mystery and Halloween, we gather as your people, surrounded by the mystery of your love and the mystery of the tree of love, of life. Unite us together in that beautiful, beautiful love. And we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we present our pumpkins and our gifts to the altar. My friends, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrificial offerings of the Lord become for you a pure oblation, and we offer them through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just, our doing salvation, we give you thanks, Lord God, for you laid all the foundations of the world. You have arranged the changing the times and the seasons. And you formed us in your own image, setting us over the whole world and all of its wonder. The angels, the archangels, we sing the hymn of joy.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make these gifts holy by sending down your spirit upon them that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was done, he took the chalice, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, this chalice of salvation. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in the Holy Spirit, always through Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop. We remember those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and our Mother, with St. Joseph, her spouse, Teresa of Avila, St. William, in honor of our little baby, and also St. Paul, patron of prisoners as we pray for our two inmates. And all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs, to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your son Jesus, who is the Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Church of Jesus Christ, rooted in the tree of his cross, rooted in the Eucharist. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, so we pray, from all these evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all fear as we await the blessed open coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I gave you, look not on our sins and the faith of your beautiful people, the church. Graciously grant our parish peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We'll share Christ's peace. Peace. Peace, Elizabeth. Peace.
the Lamb of God, be the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my life, but only the Lord. In the spirit of that beautiful meal in Zacchaeus' house, when Jesus sat with him in that spirit, I invite all of you to participate in this beautiful meal, the Eucharist, rooted in the tree of Christ's love. Amen.
May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. T Together in Joy is coming up very quickly in three weeks, our most important fundraiser. It's going to be exciting and fun. November 19th, I invite uh, our first, whoever is supposed to do the Together in Joy, <laughs> since that is extremely, there you go. Kevin. Sorry. That, no, it's okay. It's all good. Wow. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. I'm Kevin and I approve this message. <laughs> Too soon? Sorry. No, I'm Kevin. I'm with. Uh, I'm proud to, to be a part of the Together and Joy, and I want to encourage all of you. If you haven't done so, and I know some of you haven't, if you would please buy your ticket for the Together and Joy Gala on November 19th, as Father Frank just said, at City Hall events in the West Loop. It's a great experience, and what a way of helping our church. We also are requesting that if you can, or if you know somebody who would like to volunteer for the night of the event, um, and you can stick around after the event for the party, and if the gala ticket is beyond your budget, what a great way of attending by volunteering and helping us put on this wonderful experience, right? Okay. Um, and also, product placement, I'm reminding people uh, you can buy a $100 raffle ticket for the one and a hundred, one in 150 chances to win $5,000 trip to Tuscany, Capri, Florence, Iceland, or even the Jungle Resort in Belize. <laughs> now, $5,000 for a trip is pretty good. I know there's a billion dollar lottery ticket out there, so if you win it, please help out the church. But most <laughs> importantly, if you see my colleague Emily, Emily, where, there you are, she's waving. You can buy a raffle ticket for this wonderful opportunity to get away. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you very much, thank you. Father thank you. Frank. Thank you. We've got some more. Please, announcements. please, by the rat, we need we need your assistance this year. We need your assistance. If you can buy a ticket, that would be so good for us. Thank you. And Christmas is coming. Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Good morning. I just want to remind everybody that we have uh, greenery sales. Pre-orders are due on Tuesday, and then we will be selling greenery on December 3rd and 4th weekend here after the masses with some surplus. But it's important to get your pre-orders in by Tuesday so we can gauge what to order for those masses this year. And all the proceeds go to St. Teresa and help beautify our church and the outside with greenery, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Kristen also as we pray for her healing. Hi, Brian. Good morning, everyone. My wife brought me to this parish and it's been our spiritual home for the last 16 years and it's absolutely wonderful to see an almost full parish. We have room to fill in spots. But we were invited last year by a lovely French couple to a, a program that started in France called Cana Welcome. And for those of us who have been in our marriages now for a, a month, a year, or 10, or 20, it's a wonderful way to, to spend a year with a small group of couples monthly to meet at a home and to share your marriage journey with another couple in support and fellowship. We have a special introduction meeting this uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 2nd, at 7 p.m. at the parish, parish community. Uh, two of the French couple, a French couple that has spearheaded the community for the last couple decades will be here in town, and we're happy to introduce any couples to the program. It's been a wonderful experience for me and my wife and our family, and we, we invite some of you to join us. Uh, if you have questions for me, I'll be in the vestibule afterwards. Uh, so again, this the second at 7 p.m. at the Parish Center. We look forward to some couples joining us. Thank you. Thank you. That's so important. Um, we do have a great marriage prep program. We've had one for years, preparing couples for marriage. The church does little for couples once you're married, and so far now no couple has approached them. I, I just, I would encourage you, it's not for problem marriages, for any marriage that just uh, you want to strengthen your marriage bond. It's for all, all ages, newly married, long time married. It's a way to fortify your marriage and to strengthen your bond with each other and the church. So I would encourage you to continue to grow as a married couple, please. Uh, think about it. Finally, I baked, with a lot of bakery goods, uh, I baked two haunted houses. Um, I baked them, they're called Spiced rum haunted houses. I have a mold. Um, so I baked two of them myself. It's in the Paris Center. So come and get some coffee. There's some zucchini bread, some treats. 
Tomorrow at 6 p.m. I will have the, a mass in honor of all saints, a vigil mass. I haven't done that in many, many years. Tuesday evening we have adoration, the feast of all saints. So I'm going to have a mass for all saints tomorrow, 6 p.m. in the church. Bring your children for trick-or-treating with their costumes. It'll be a short mass, I promise. And then 8 a.m. on the Feast of All Saints. It technically is not an obligation, since Sunday isn't an obligation technically. So, but I'm going to have two Masses for All Saints. 6 p.m. Monday, tomorrow, Halloween, and 8 a.m. Tuesday, November 1st. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass, and we go in peace to serve God's poor. Thanks be to God.